today, friends, as we come to the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, we are in an area now, the crucifixion of Christ, where very candidly, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's all profitable. But this that describes the death and resurrection of Christ has particular meaning for us today. And we close the last chapter with Jesus in the hands of his enemies. His own were scattered. One has betrayed him. Another has denied him. And it's the night of sin in two different ways. Sin is trying to destroy him. And he is doing something about sin for he's dying for your sin and my sin. And I suppose that it could be said that the cross is one of the many paradoxes of the Christian faith for that reason. It is at once the greatest tragedy of the ages and the most glorious victory of earth and heaven. Therefore, as we come to this chapter, we should not come with a feeling of defeat our sympathy for the sufferer. We should walk, I think, softly and reverently through these scenes with a heart welling up to God in thanksgiving for providing so great salvation. And the tragic note, I think, is inescapable in these scenes with the cruel injustice and bitter suffering inflicted upon the Lord Jesus you will recall that Clovis, the barbarian, exclaimed when he first heard the gospel read to him. He said, if I'd only been there with my soldiers. Well, it's not our sympathy that the Son of God wants. It's our faith. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And he wants the faith of your heart, not the sympathy of your heart. Now, I have said before, I repeat it again today, Mark is the gospel of action. And this 15th chapter of Mark sets forth the supreme nature of, of the action. The crucifixion is the climactic point and the crowning event of this section. It is the crucifixion toward which all creation and the purposes of God were moving from out eternity. For he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now the gospel is translated into action. Paul could say later on, I've delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, the gospel is what he did. It's not what God's asking you to do. It's his action, not your action or mine today, because you and I are in no position to do anything that would be acceptable to God. Your righteousness and my righteousness is not acceptable for salvation. God provides that righteousness in Christ. He delivered for our offenses, raised for our justification or our righteousness. Now, in this chapter, we see Jesus first carried before Pilate, verses 1 and 6. Then Jesus condemned and Barabbas released, verses 7 through 15. Then Jesus crowned with thorns, verses 16 through 23. And then Jesus crucified, verses 24 to 41. And then finally, 42 to 47, Jesus committed to Joseph and put in his new tomb.